Hey guys, my name is Savannah and today we're talking all about the Savannah African elephant in this species breakdown. So as you can see, if you're familiar with the series, we have all these guys sitting in this makeshift habitat here. And we're going to talk all about uh, their different color variations. We'll go over their Zoopedia. We'll talk about their animations and their enrichment items. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about habitat design. If you guys are looking for some inspiration on what to build for your African elephants. So if we first start off by taking a look at these guys, there are four different skin variants for the African elephant. Uh, three normal ones and one albino one. So starting off here, we have dark gray skin right here. There's subtle, subtle differences between all of them. Here we have uh, gray skin, so probably the lightest of them, I think. I will, of course, uh, in just a minute, put a picture up of all three of these side by side. And then finally, we have brown gray skin. So let's go ahead and throw up that graphic. These are all three of the different skin variations. Again, brown gray skin, gray skin, and then dark gray skin. Super subtle variations between them. But the differences are there and it still helps add variety to your park. And then finally, of course, we have albino, which is pink skin with dark patches, which is this guy laying down right here. Let's get him to stand up so that we can actually see him properly, her properly. So we have albino, of course, we have blue eyes and then some pink skin that kind of fades into, or I should say gray skin that kind of fades into pink skin on the bottom really cool little albino. I really like it. Um, I like when obviously there are some color morphs with any of the animals, but there is your albino going to be pretty difficult to find. Uh, it took me a little while. So there you go. There is the albino guy. Now let's use the albino one to take a look at their Zoopedia, of course. So when you first open up their Zoopedia, you have this front page as always. They are endangered and then there is some information for you about them. Of course, the uh, African elephant is from Africa. So you can see their range there. They like the biomes desert and grassland. And then they do need quite a bit of space, 2100 uh, meters squared about for just one. And then you can see it goes up drastically with each additional one. A herd of four is going to be about 4,000 meters squared. So quite a bit of space there. And then they also do have a water requirement. So you're gonna need to make sure these guys have some water that they can get in and uh, swim around in. There's their temperature requirements there. And then greater than a 6.6 .6 foot fence of grade four. Moving to the species data tab, their group size from three to 15. So as mentioned, pretty big habitats because you are going to need a minimum of three. However, they are only happy with one male, uh, but up to 14 females. So they are going to be a male led herd there. You can see a little bit more about them. They are confident with humans, but please don't let humans enter their exhibit. I think all of us could have guessed that. And then scrolling down, there's more down here about them. Feel free to pause and take a closer look at this if you'd like. And then going to the interspecies enrichment, uh, there is none. So these guys like to have their habitat all to themselves and not share with anybody else. So there's their Zoopedia, their colorations. And of course, let's take a look at their enrichment. So I have all of that placed out here. I was actually fairly surprised to see that they can use these two pool enrichment items. However, the adults cannot. It's only going to be the baby African elephants that can use these two. I did release a short on the channel uh, showcasing the animation that the baby does with these little pools, specifically with this one and it's super cute. We're gonna get to animations next, but I do have to say the baby elephants are by far the most fun to watch. I think Frontier gave them adorable little personalities and adorable animations. Other than that, no surprises here with uh, enrichment. It's gonna be kind of the, the big items that they can push around. A couple of the foraging feeders. We have this big uh, log wheel thing <laughs> that they can use. Um, this feeder that they push into, the rubbing pillar that they can rub up against. And then of course, 
the uh, the water fountain feature there. So that is going to be all of the enrichment items that they can use. And let's uh, go ahead and jump into some of their animations. Now, I can't promise I got all of them, but I do feel like I got the majority of them. So let's go ahead and take a look. Getting into the animations, we're gonna start with the typical animations. So the eating, the drinking, the napping, stuff that all animals have. You can see their eating animation here out of the tray, just picking up big trunks full of hay, stuffing it into their mouth. It's gonna be the exact same thing with this little baby here. I did split up a lot of the baby's animations into like its own little section at the end because I think they're all just absolutely adorable and I wanted to showcase the baby on its own. But in terms of eating, not too spectacular here. It's exactly what we would expect using that trunk to eat. It's the same thing that they do here with uh, drinking. They're gonna pick up uh, or suck up, I guess, lots of water and then shoot that into their mouth. I love the little bit of detail of water kind of falling out of their mouth as well. So pretty cool animation for drinking there. And then next we have the mating animation. And so you can see here the male kind of walks up from the side behind the female. They do a little bit of trunk and nuzzling, uh, stuff like that. It's a pretty simple animation. There is a little bit of glitching with it, but you get the point here. They're just kind of nuzzling one another, and then that's their mating animation. Their fighting animation is actually pretty cool, uh, pretty um, low-key, I think, for elephants fighting in real life, but they're just going to do a lot of hitting each other with their trunks, their tusks, uh, butting heads back and forth. And then eventually this uh, left hand elephant is going to lose poor little guy. He's going to run away, get chased off by the other male there. And then we have this cute little animation. So this is an animation between the babies and the father. I didn't witness it with the mother, but basically the baby walks underneath the father and then just goes on the other side, makes some noises and just kind of interacts with the dad. So I thought that that was really cute as well. Dust bathing, of course, they'll do this standing up uh, as you see here. Please ignore the baby kind of running around at the feet. I could not get one where the baby was just not in the way. But they'll do this standing up on their feet um, and uh, shooting, you know, dust into the air. But they'll also do it here laying down as well, where they'll kind of take up a, I, I want to say handful, but trunk full. <laughs> they'll use their trunk to grab uh, some dust and then throw it in the air. They'll also trumpet and make some noise there, of course, because, you know, we wouldn't have an elephant in the game without some trumpeting. And then on to some of the enrichment items for the adults. This is going to be the spin feeder, I think it's called. But yeah, they just use their trunk to spin it, uh, let down some hay, and then it's the standard eating animation where they're going to pick up a hayful of hayful, a trunk full of hay and eat it. Of course, they use the scratching pillar. I've got two different angles for this one, but the adults are kind of cool. They kind of uh, rub past on their side and then spend some extra time itching their butt, which I think is pretty funny. Their little tail goes up and they get a nice good scratch on their butt. We get the albino one doing it here as well, kind of rubbing alongside. The ear does clip with the enrichment item, um, but as far as clipping goes, it's not that bad. Uh, in terms of other animations do kind of clip a little bit worse, but see there getting that uh, really nice butt scratch. <laughs> and then we move on to babies. Uh, so first I wanted to show off the animation with the two pool enrichment items. So this is the plain pool um, that I believe was originally introduced for the dingoes, but they get in, they lay down, they splash around in the water. It's going to be the exact same animation for the dam enrichment item. But I just wanted to go ahead and show it twice. That way you uh, could see exactly what they do. And uh, you could believe me, I guess. Not that you think that I'm lying, but there you go. This one is the one with the dam as well. Baby gets in, kind of splashes around. I love when Frontier kind of adds these not so like secret animations, but they didn't like announce that when this 
uh, enrichment item was added to the game that it was going to uh, be usable by the elephants. So stuff that they add in but don't necessarily fully announce. I think that that is uh, it's pretty cool to see. And then, of course, we have some play fighting from the babies where they're going to kind of go back and forth and headbutt each other and uh, just be cute little rambunctious babies. And then they do this animation all the time where they kind of wiggle their head and twirl their trunk around. I think it's such an endearing little animation. It makes them so cute. You can see he was doing it there again before we see the playing in the water animation. I just love that Frontier gave them such, like I said, cute and endearing little animations where they just seem so playful and so fun and so full of life. I love it. They, of course, will use the scratching post too. Um, they mostly scratch like the middle of their body and whatnot. They don't do like the whole butt scratch that the adults do. Then they can sit down and when they go for a nap, it's actually really cute. They just kind of flop over on their sides and then lay down and take a nice little nap in the sun. They'll wiggle their ears every once in a while, but other than that, just kind of a, a simple napping animation. And then of course we have a uh, swimming. So they will go in the water and they will actually swim, not just walk around in the water. The adults will as well, but for such a simple animation, it's much cuter to watch the baby do it. So there you go, baby doing the swimming. And then last but not least, we have the baby dust bathing animation where they do the same thing as mom and dad. So talking about exhibit design, we have our first reference picture here. This one, of course, is a concept art, but it kind of illustrates like the open space and the big pools that elephants really need in zoo exhibits. Um, this one is relatively plain on the inside because elephants can be quite destructive, um, but it does have some decorative stuff on the outside to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. Tons of viewing areas. Uh, it looks like these elephants do have a dry moat in between. If you look really carefully, at first it does look like they can walk right up to the edge, but if you look just on the left, right behind that that center elephant's butt, it does look like there is a bit of a dry moat. So that would, of course, keep guests safe while also keeping this exhibit very open air, very open feeling. Uh, if we move on to the next one, we have an indoor picture here. Again, just lots of open space for these guys. They have a little bit of a pool and then some uh, hot wire fencing that keeps them in. Again, these guys are pretty destructive, so a lot of the habitats and exhibits that you're going to see are very, very open. Uh, elephants walk quite a bit in the wild, so elongated uh, habitats and exhibits are much better for them so that they can walk from one side to the other because they really need that in order to keep their feet healthy. Moving on to the next picture, it kind of demonstrates that as well. Again, a big open pool, lots of grassy area for them to walk around. This is a much bigger habitat than what we were just previously looking at, but I guarantee in all of these photos, we're really only looking at a section of the exhibits because these guys really do need a lot of space. And last but not least, I this may be the exact same exhibit from a different angle that we were just looking at, um, but lots of open space, high walls that keep them in, uh, minimal tree and just lots of grass and stuff for them to walk around, lots of water for them to play in. And uh, that's going to be the majority of what you're going to see for elephant exhibit reference pictures. There is no shortage of reference pictures for these guys. It's one of the easier animals to find reference pictures for. So if you just Google uh, African elephant exhibit, I recommend utilizing the word exhibit rather than habitat. The, en the internet, excuse me, seems to think of habitat as their wild habitat. So you'll get reference pictures of open grasslands in Africa. Um, but if you look at exhibits or zoo exhibits, that's generally the terminology that's used to describe how these animals are kept in captivity. So you get much better reference uh, picture results. 
Now, if we hop over to an exhibit that I recently built for the African elephant, this speed build will be up on the channel very soon of how I kind of built this. I will say I really love this exhibit design. However, it is a bit short. Ideally for these guys, this might extend a little bit more so that they can really get that walking space that they need. But just to kind of showcase their needs and, of course, make it Planet Zoo uh, realistic because it is a video game. We have lots of pools for them to go into. Steps down in. Steps down in here. Uh, water viewing for elephants is actually really, really common. So if we go down in here and we look, the guests get a great view of the elephants. But we do have this planter and rocks to kind of keep them back a little bit. If we were really going for realism here, there probably would be some sort of hot wire or maybe this gap would be a little bit higher because right now, I mean, you can see him here. He could probably very easily reach his trunk over to the gas and rip out all of this foliage if he wanted to. Um, but again, we're realism inspired here with this exhibit. We are surrounded with the very typical um, hot wire fencing that we see in elephant exhibits. We have big gates to let in vehicles to bring in uh, food or just to do cleaning or anything like that. Big sliding doors that go into their indoor area. I, of course, being someone that doesn't like to build interiors, there is nothing inside this building, but you get the point. They would be able to go inside here. Um, lots of shade structures for them, and I really liked bringing these outside of the exhibit a little bit. It just kind of helps with that immersion feel, I think. And then I envisioned that a keeper could walk over here and do some sort of uh, keeper talk or training demonstration where the keeper standing here and asking the elephant here to do certain behaviors or something like that and demonstrate uh, what they can do. Same thing here. So you can see the uh, door here is not really meant to let elephants in and out, but more so keepers, uh, equipment, trucks, things like that. Um, and then you could walk through here. Now, I did not build like a gate or anything like that here. My vision would be that uh, vehicles or heavy machinery or whatever enter somewhere else in the building and then this is how they access the habitat but again realism inspired not realism one for one recreations uh, then we have lots of just kind of decorative stuff and rock work and then these high mud walls with lots of foliage in here to give it a little bit of detail and things because obviously the elephants would probably trample and or eat that um, and yeah, so that is the overall exhibit design. Now, as always, if you enjoyed the video, you learned a little bit and you got some inspiration, do consider leaving a like on the bottom of this video and a comment letting me know what you thought. And of course, subscribing if you want to hear uh, any more about Planet Zoo animals, habitat inspiration, or just a little bit of information about the animals. This speed build will, of course, be on the channel where we'll go over exactly what I was doing when I was building it, as well as some information about the elephants themselves. Uh, but that is going to be it for this video. The next species breakdown is going to be whichever animal is next alphabetically in the Zoopedia. Don't know which one it is off the top of my head, but do keep a lookout for that. And until next time, you can follow me on all my social media accounts. Links are down below in the description. And we, of course, do have some very adorable animal merch on my website. Again, that link can be found in the description. And until next time, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.